Ever heard of a classic film from 1960 set in the gold rush days of Alaska? Well, buckle up because this one's a roller coaster of laughter, surprises, and touching moments. Whether it's a childhood favorite or a new discovery, there's something special about this flick. So what's the deal with it? Think John Wayne romance and a heap of comedy all rolled into one wild adventure. Got any personal stories about how this movie impacted you? Maybe it sparked a love for old Hollywood flicks or brings back memories of family movie nights. Whatever your connection, it's a film that stuck with many over the years. So, kick back, relax, and enjoy reminiscing about this timeless classic. Share your memories or experiences related to the movie below. Can't wait to hear from you. North to Alaska stands out as one of Wayne's best of movies. The film boasts a lot of strengths, including its cast, scenery, and slapstick comedy. Set in the backdrop of the Gold Rush era, it follows the adventures of Sam McCord, portrayed by John Wayne, and his partner George Pratt, played by Stuart Granger. Their lives take a humorous turn when a beautiful woman named Michelle Angel Bonnet, portrayed by Capucine, enters the scene. The movie beautifully captures the essence of the era with stunning cinematography that highlights the natural beauty of the locations despite California doubling for Alaska. While the comedy occasionally veers into broad territory, Wayne's performance as Sam McCord is a highlight. He brings a charming mix of humor and ruggedness to the role, making it easy for audiences to root for him. The dynamic between the characters adds depth to the storyline, particularly the subplot involving Angel's journey of self-discovery. Capucine delivers a standout performance, infusing her character with both vulnerability and strength. Director Henry Hathaway's skillful direction brings out the best in Wayne, showcasing his comedic talents and a departure from his more serious roles. Despite its flaws, including moments of overacting and a few missteps in the comedic timing, North to Alaska remains a delightful romp through the Gold Rush era. It's a testament to Wayne's versatility as an actor and his ability to tackle lighter fare with ease. In conclusion, North to Alaska may not be a classic in the traditional sense, but it offers plenty of entertainment value for fans of John Wayne and lighthearted adventure films. Its blend of humor, romance, and action makes it a worthwhile addition to any movie night lineup. Richard Deacon was a character actor known for playing strong authority figures and wearing glasses. He was also a big fan of books and loved cooking fancy food. During the Vietnam War, John Wayne criticized young people who avoided the military draft by going to Europe, calling them cowards, traitors, and communists. In 1930, Raoul Walsh picked John Wayne for a movie called The Big Trail. This made the studio change his name to John Wayne, inspired by a book about a tough general from the Revolutionary War. These stories give us a peek into the lives of the people who made the movie. Richard Deacon's love for cooking and John Wayne's opinions during the war, along with how he got his name, all add to the story of North to Alaska. John Wayne, famous for his roles in cowboy movies, had a changing view on politics throughout his life. At first, he leaned towards socialist and liberal ideas, but later on, he leaned more towards being a conservative Republican. He was friends with Henry Fonda, who was more liberal, and Wayne used the term liberal carefully to keep their friendship strong, especially in Hollywood. Despite being known as a conservative, Wayne surprised many by supporting a treaty under President Jimmy Carter. As Wayne got older, he worried about his appearance in movies, especially his weight and getting older. He thought he could only keep his audience by sticking to his familiar cowboy roles. Despite these worries, he continued to be a big presence in the movie industry. Wayne had some disagreements with directors like Steven Spielberg, who he thought didn't show enough love for America in their movies. But even with these differences, they stayed friends. Wayne even had an idea for a movie that he pitched to Spielberg. John Wayne's life, with its ups and downs in politics, changes in his career, and his lasting friendships is still talked about and studied in Hollywood today. In stories about some famous people, we learn about their personal lives. For example, there's a man named Joe Sawyer who liked to travel a lot when he got older. His son says Joe was comfortable on both big cargo ships and fancy passenger boats. Before going on a cruise, Joe would go on a special diet for three to four weeks because he loved the food they served on the ship. Then there's another famous person, John Wayne, who was really good at acting in movies, but he also had a bad habit of smoking a lot. He smoked five packs of strong cigarettes every day until he got sick with cancer in 1964. After that, he switched to chewing tobacco and then started smoking cigars. And there's Capucine, who wanted to be an actress, even though her family wanted her to be a teacher or work in a bank. This shows us how she made her own choices in life, even though it was different from what her family wanted for her. 
These stories give us a peek into the private lives of some well-known people and show us what they liked and how they made decisions. In 2007, the Republican governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and First Lady Maria Schreiber announced that John Wayne would be inducted into the California Hall of Fame. This induction took place on May 12th of the same year at the California Museum for History, Women, and the Arts in Sacramento. In 2014, Mark Elliott's book American Titan Searching for John Wayne alleged that he deliberately avoided enlisting in the armed forces during World War II. It was claimed that Wayne's fear of the affair ending with Marlene Dietrich and concerns about his age affecting his leading man status in action-oriented roles contributed to this decision. John Wayne also turned down the lead role in MacArthur in 1977, a role that ultimately went to Gregory Peck. John Wayne, a prominent figure in the film industry, founded his production company Batjack. Originally intended to be named Batjack, a typographical error in a secretary's paperwork resulted in the permanent adoption of the name Batjack. Wayne, considerate of the secretary's feelings, chose to retain the misspelled version. In the mid-30s, Columbia Pictures enlisted John Wayne for several westerns in its B-unit. However, a misunderstanding with Columbia Chief Harry Cohn led to false accusations of Wayne making advances towards a starlet involved with Cohn. This unfounded scandal tarnished Wayne's reputation, leading to a hiatus from work. Upon discovering the truth, Wayne confronted Cohn aggressively, vowing never to work for him or Columbia, a promise he upheld even after Cohn's death in 1958. Despite his tough exterior, John Wayne shared a deep friendship with actress Maureen O'Hara. Over 39 years, he considered her the greatest person he ever knew, and they starred together in five films. O'Hara, reciprocating the sentiment, dedicated a wing in her home as the John Wayne Wing. After recovering from open-heart surgery, John Wayne intended to star in a film called Bo John alongside Ron Howard. Unfortunately, due to his declining health, the project never materialized. According to Howard, Wayne expressed his determination by stating, It's me, and you kid, or it's nobody. Ernie Kovacs tied the knot with Eddie Adams in Mexico City. Their wedding was officiated by former New York City Mayor William O'Dwyer and conducted in Spanish, a language neither Kovacs nor Adams understood. O'Dwyer had to prompt them to say C during the vows. Frank Fallon portrayed a taxi driver in notable films like Preston Sturge's The Palm Beach Story and Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. 